Hey, I'm back. A few tech issues. I apologize for that. And I apologize for the lateness of this. Hopefully we can get back on track shortly. However, not your issue. It's mine. So here we go. Um, 2013 Skittles changed flavors from green lime to sour apple. For some people, it was a, in the Skittles community, it was a great, great day. And for others, not so much. Me personally, I like the green apple. However, I do like it when they go back and do retro for lime. Doesn't matter. Let's say I have a bin of 10,000 Skittles. I reach in and grab a five, and it says they're all green. Now, since there's only five different colors in the standard bag of Skittles, the probability, what's the probability that I would get all five? So a couple of things, sorry. Is it binomial? Well, let's find out. So you have two choices. It's either green or it's not. Um, numbers are fixed. You're only picking five. Same probability for each one in theory, but the independence is the problem because we're not replacing it. Okay, we're not going through. So then, all right, well, fine. We know how to do that. So what's the probability of it all being green? Well, the first one is going to be 20,000 out of or 2,000 out of 10,000, right? And then since I've lost one green in both groups, it's going to be 1999 over 9,999. So you get an answer of about... 0.00319. All right, great. Now, if you assumed it was a binomial setting, we would do this, right? So you would have probability of all green, 5 choose 5. We're going to just assume it's going to be 0.2 to the fifth power. This is going to be a 1. And you get 0 0.00320, which is almost that. In fact, you're only off by, what would that be, 1 100 thousandth? Yeah, because what? Tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousand. Yeah, so you're only off by one one hundred thousandth. So, and that's what you're actually saying on here. So what do you answer to compare the two? This it's just basically the same. But the reason why is probability is number two changed a little because we have a sample of five out of ten thousand Skittles. Okay, so that'd be what? Five out of ten thousand, ten out of twenty thousand. Yeah, I mean, so you're talking about like point five hundredths of a percent. And so we have this thing called the ten percent condition, and it says that as long as your sample is less than ten percent of your population, you can treat it as binomial. So you can go all the way up to ten percent of your population without worrying about replacement, and it's going to effectively not have a giant effect. And this is actually part of the reason why, you know, we can take samples of people across the United States and say it does expand to this, you know, from what we're seeing in exit polls, from what we're seeing in the sample, that this would actually accurately reflect, you know, the population that we're looking for. Okay. So now I'm going to grab a huge handful of Skittles. I'm going to take 100 out of the bin of 10,000. I'm assuming we, I guess I put the five green Skittles back. So let X be the number of red Skittles in a handful of 100 Skittles. X can be considered binomial a binomial random variable because the 10% condition is satisfied. Because 100 is less than 10% of 10,000. Okay. What's the probability of getting at most 11 green Skittles? Actually, this probably should be red. I'm sorry. You guys deserve better. All right. It's the same either way. So the probability of X being less than or equal to 11, since we're talking about um, 11 or le at most 11, we're going to use binomial CDF. So, and this is one of the ways you can actually write this out so that it meets the condition. So N is 100, P, the probability is 0.2, X value is 11. Boom, I get 0 0.126. So now the question is, what shape is this? And I've already kind of shown off that it's normal. And the question is, why? So if we go over here and go to our staplet, and so we have an N of 100, and we have a probability of 20%. Check out the probability, the plot distribution. Let that look familiar at all? And check this out. If we do normal ability, normal curve, it pretty much matches up. Now, it's not quite as pretty as some of the stuff you guys do in calculus if you've taken calculus before, but that's a whole different ball of wax. So the question then becomes, why, if it looks that good, why are we even worrying about binomial distributions? Can we just treat it as normal? So to that end, maybe there's something about it, and there is. 
Okay, so let's just double check to see what it would look like. So to calculate out the mean and standard deviation, just like what we did yesterday, the mean is going to be n times p, so I get 20. And your standard deviation is going to be 4 because I'm going to take the square root of 100 times uh, probability of success times the probability of failure. So if I use this as my mean and this is my standard deviation, I can go through and come up with the z-score. So my z-score for 11, 11 minus 20, all divided by 4, I get a, a z-score of a negative 2.25. We look that up on table A, and I get 0 0.0122. And if I compare those two numbers, that you're only four ten thousandths off, which would be, what, four hundredths of a percent. So those are almost the same. And so what we now have, so in addition to the 10% rule up here, 10% condition up here that allows us to treat um, places where we can treat it as binomial, whether or not we have replacement or not, now we have something called the large counts condition. And large counts allows us to treat something as normal, and we'll formalize this here in a second, if the number of successes is bigger than 10 and the number of failures is bigger than 10. Effectively, then, you've got enough in both sides that you can say, okay, we can pretty much treat it as normal, and away you go. So anyway, we'll formalize this in the next video. Like, subscribe, throw a question down below. And with that being said, we will continue our march towards the end of Chapter 6 here in a moment. See you soon.